So halfway there, we have created the transition object for the exit out of the overworld, and now we need to create the transition object to go into the uh, battle scene. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to go to battle and using the same tile put it here I'm actually going to do this for Now what we're going to do just like the other one, we're going to change the color and as we mentioned before you can highlight multiple objects and change the same attribute. The name says this is going to be the top their size. And there will be some trial and error to this. Overlap uh, going outside of the boundary of the camera is fine. In this particular case, it shouldn't mess up any calculations. So now let's duplicate, duplicate those settings. So 11 by 3. So, actually the left and the right aren't quite right, they're not deep enough. There we go. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to just as the transition started at the center of the screen and zoomed out, we're going to do the same thing where the visibility is going to start at the center and zoom out. But in this case, we don't actually have to change the size of anything because if you move each object, so we got this blank space in the middle, if you move each object at the same time, it's going to look like 
zooming because the visibility is going to get bigger. So what we're going to do is with a single script, we should be able to move all these objects. So let's go to our scripts folder, create a new script. And we're doing it this way because we're going to drag and drop it onto all of them at once. And we'll call this um, zoom. So this one should be out. Now oh, renamed it Zoom Control Out One. We'll stick with that. Now we'll take that, drop it onto them. And now they each should have it. We really don't have to time it the same way because in this case we're not doing a magnification where we're making it look like as if there is one. In fact, we're just doing a single linear scroll. You're just moving it in a certain direction. So let's give these four objects. This looks 2D, rigid body. Zero gravity, and let's see if that worked. Yes, they all have the rigid body 2D. Okay. So, we simply have to, at the beginning, in the start routine, check for the name. So, if tile, oops, sorry, if game object dot. And as we mentioned before, that when you are given a command and you start with game object, you are referring explicitly to the object that the script is attached to. So since it's attached to four objects, I'm saying which one I want this to take effect on. So only the one that has that name. And we will give this... Four times because there's four objects, just have to check each name. Since this is the bottom and it's moving down, it needs a negative velocity. For the one that's left, that's the x velocity that has to change. And if it's the one on the right, are on top of everything else. So we'll all 
also. enough for this. And now we save this. Go back to Opal World. Okay, so we just need to tweak this a little bit. A little bit of a housekeeping and we will be done. So we need those objects to be destroyed once they're off the screen else they'll just keep going on and on and on. So let's use a similar time dot delta time. Now this total time is not the same as the other total time because they are not static variables. They don't have that word static. So you can reuse a variable name. For debugging reasons, you might get confused depending which one you're using. In this case, not a big deal. slow, a little bit too quick actually, and uh, you're going to see that the, the black bars will suddenly disappear and then we can tweak it to the right setting. how they suddenly disappeared. So that's telling us it's working. Now we just have to get this the right one. And while we're at it, we're going to trim this one because these goes on a little bit too long as well. There's a little bit too much of a pause. the transition in and the transition out. 